Hey Aditya, how are you been? Welcome to Sudeep Audio's channel. Thank you, thank you. Your uh, sayings are a super hit. <laughs> and the quotes that you come up with are exactly what you are. And they're your feelings and your experiences that you keep sharing. Yeah. yeah. So thank you very much for contributing to sayings. And oh, thank you so much for putting it up. I mean, it's one thing about me saying, it's completely another thing about it reaching the <laughs> platform. <laughs> no, thank you. Uh, Srijesh, we'll run through your uh, journey as a sound engineer, mm -hmm. how exactly you entered this line because a lot of people think that if you're from Bombay or Max Delhi, you go to this field. Mm -hmm. But you being from Kerala, which is also uh, very well known for mm. institutes as well as you know films, mm. how was your, uh, how did you get into this you know uh, field? Right. Um, so I did uh, my B.Tech in mechanical engineering uh, and uh, once I did that I figured like I didn't really like <laughs> mechanical engineering as a subject. I'm not saying it's wrong, I mean B.Tech is a fantastic thing. I, I know my dad would have thought like like you wasted a seat that would have been quite useful for four years. Anyways. Did you complete your course? Oh yeah, 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 I passed with distinction. So at least I tried to, you know, make justice to the study part of it. and. So post that, uh, that was a time when, you know, I kind of heard uh, about, um, and we, we had a, we kind of had a college band and I used to be a part of it and all of that. And then I decided, I thought like, okay, there is a field called sound engineering at that point of time. And uh, it was not quite well known, you know, it, 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 I came from a en mechanical engineering background. The primary things were like mechanical engineers were going into IT and then you know you have electric, electrical engineering, electronics engineering and all of that. And then I heard about this section of things and I thought like okay that's something very unique. I mean like at that point you meet a doctor, you meet a lawyer, you meet an aerospace engineer, you know what they do. You meet a sound engineer like what is it that you do, you know, it's, it's a very curious question. <laughs> and unfortunately, it being a very curious question was also a very difficult question to answer for my parents. You know, like, like they're like, you've done mechanical engineering, why do you want to do something that no one's even heard of? And uh, I even got admission to quite a prestigious management institute, which I left to pursue uh, a diploma in sound engineer in, in sound. Um, so I did my um, diploma in sound from Chedana in Trishur. Um, one of the most fundamental things that I've learned about when it comes to learning sound is that it is not something you can see and it is something you hear so every person has a different perspective to sound which also means that everybody will have an opinion to sound so something that's good for you may not be the best for someone else and things like so how do you learn something that you don't really see and one of the key things that we were taught at Chedana is like it is not like this is the this is what sound is no this is what you need to explore and learn sound. So the the first benefit of that, if you learn sound in that way, is like it is open for exploration. When something is open for exploration, it is you know you get inspired daily. Uh, when now I'll come back to the fact of getting inspired daily because it may seem like an utopian concept when you're working for like eighteen twenty hours a day for like continuously for like seven days a week, you know, months in a row, you know, like how do you get inspired daily, you know, it's, it seems it's a very big question. And you don't even see the sun for days. You don't even see the sun for days. I mean, there's this thing where once I was working on a film and you know, I got caught up so much in that film that I ended up spending most of my two, three weeks in the studio itself without coming out. And once in the afternoon or something, I came out, I got a sunburn. Oops. In, in like half an hour. So it, it gets to you. And the only thing that will drive you to that limit is your passion for this. Now, you can have a passion for something. Now, how do you look at passion? Is it something that will drive you or is it something that is keeping you entertained? These are two different things. Like, I have a passion, let's say, for, let's say if I, if I were a good singer, I have a passion for singing. The question is, will I still continue singing if no one's looking at me? 
or am I singing for an audience? Then my passion is not singing, my passion is performance. I want people to look at me. Then it becomes to a point where like, okay, I want people to know me. Then after a point of time, it no longer remains kind of a passion. And unfortunately or fortunately, when the world of the engineering part of sound, you are hidden. So the passion that has to motivate you has to be from you. No one is going to look at you and say, dude, that's, that's like, you know, you're doing an amazing thing. You know, I want to be like you. It's, it's very rare that people come and to me like, what do you do? Oh, I do sound for films. I want to do that. You're like, really? <laughs> but when you think about this, now anyways, going back to where I came from. So I did my engineer, my dipl- um, diploma in sound. Yeah, but coming back to yeah. your, your college days, you said you were a part of a band. Yes. So you used to sing? I used to sing. Yeah. <laughs> it was western uh, it was mostly western in fact uh, there's also a good friend of mine um, he works in Yashad so Sam so Sam was four years my senior in college and so he was also part of the part of the band he also sings quite well so we were most of western singing and it's not like I'm a trained singer or you know, I haven't learned a single note and all of that but it's always good to have an idea of m- music okay, so I'm saying didn't that trigger some passion in you in the sense that since you were already singing and singers are known usually right. the most known in a band yeah did that not kind of motivate you or yeah but the, it was a group of singers <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so it changes I mean it was mostly a cappella kind of things okay. so but you know I get where this is coming from the uh, the thing is like isn't that artistic form something that motivated me to go into the thing I mean when you look at sound Remember, it's, it's also an engineering part associated with it. Uh, but the whole beauty of sound engineering is that you're using something that is technical or theoretical to achieve something that is completely artistic. There are very few art forms that can let you do that. You know, if you're singing, of course, a singer will have his or her techniques. But when you look at, you know, like a complete, like if you're looking about, like you're running these amazing tutorials, like you're talking about compressors, you're talking about gates and things like that. You're talking about something that's completely technical and that can be used to achieve something that's really beautiful and emotional. So there is a whole art form in that. Although it is very much closely blended with technology. Now you can't step back and say that, okay, I want to be a pure artist. No, that does not work. You have to be updated, which is why the engineering background helped me. Because one of the good things about engineering is like, okay, you're quite used to having problems hit at you. And then, of course, the supply part, you have no supply in in real life in mixing. But you get to understand how problems are solved at a more basic level. And um, again, when it comes to sound, a lot of times you are more of, you're doing troubleshooting at the first level. Once you're done troubleshooting, as in like, when I say troubleshooting, it's not like checking if the signal comes or not. It's about troubleshooting on a creative level. Like, is this dialogue going to fit well with that score? Is this so, you know, all of those little, little things. Once you get that is then you get, you get to the next level of actually creating something artistically. And um, it took me many years to honestly understand that. I mean, like I did my diploma in sound, I joined uh, Raj Kamal Studios as a second assistant and as a second assistant your only job is to you know keep make sure the studio runs an order T and you know make sure the books and the pens are on the right line and <laughs> you wait for someone to fall ill before you can become the first assistant and you know in any studio let me tell you this um, the more experience and the more known you get you graduate towards the center of the room which is a sweet spot <laughs> Um, otherwise, you'll have to make do with your left ear or your right ear. You know, you don't want to be sitting and doing that. Um, but the good thing about learning from Chetana is that you understand that everything is a learning experience. There is no full stop. Because the day you put a full stop, the world is not going to stop there. There is always somebody out there who will do something that is completely opposite to your beliefs and yet give you a much better output. You have to be ready to accept that. And Any then example like, come to mind? Like, okay, now traditionally, let's say we're talking about film mixing, right? Now, let's say we're doing surround mixes. Uh, now, uh, one of my biggest drawback, which I'm happy to, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm happy to admit, but I must admit, is I've never done stereo mixes, for example. I've done very few stereo mixes. 
and i've hardly recorded in my life i have a lot of respect for anybody who does a stereo mix or even a mono mix because that's one of the most difficult things to achieve as a mix you want to be able to tell your dynamics your story it has to sound good using just two speakers and you know you have people like uh, in your channel like vijay deya you know and and uh, you have uh, bishida bishadeep chatterjee and you have shantanu and you have a lot of these farhad and all of these amazing amazing people who can pull off magic from just two speakers so is yes, coming back to all of these things so you look at that and then i've always done surround mixes i've very rarely done these two mixes now there was always a concept where you know you're not supposed to put this thing in the surround you're not supposed to put this things towards the center okay now for a very long time you know, i would say even even until it still happens people tend to mix music as left right with the reverbs to the surround and the vocals in the center now the whole fact is no, the audience does not see the screen as three speakers hmm. you have to look at it as a stage and if you position something in a stereo field let's say between the left and right why not use the center speaker this was a big thing and I, like when i started is like okay you're supposed to do this and you ask why are you supposed to do this there's no clear cut answer for that that's the way it is that's the way it is and i'm assuming that okay somebody must have tried something and gone wrong but i never thought of like what if nobody tried kind of a thing and then you you see other people come up with these completely different ideas like they have different sounds going to the surrounds they have a, they using the space between the center channel and the left like between the left and the center and the center and the right they using that space as well they not relying on something the, which is a phantom center which is the kind of center that is created between the left and right and all of that and then suddenly you start to think as like there are no rules there are only guidelines to this thing and when you look at that you start thinking okay, like i said there is someone somewhere who will go the entire opposite way of what you think and then do an amazing job so one of the things is um when you are a second assistant or when you are an assistant you know there is a certain amount of mistakes that you can make as long as it's not too strong because there is always somebody above you who understands that and is ready to correct it but when you become a, a like a like a mix engineer you know you have to take the responsibility of that film in which everybody from the person who's making that first cup of tea to give to the actors to the most senior director or the actor has given their 100%. There's no point in assuming they've given only 50%. No, it doesn't work that way. So, when you look at that and when you when you look learn those things, there is a path that you decide to take to go forward and then for me it has always been about doing pulling off things that are never conventional. I mean I figured like but how did you get this courage because many times the assistant or mm. even the mix engineer for that yeah. matter might want to experiment with the sound but if the director is not cooperative enough or not you know kind of supporting your ideas then it will just go for a toss right no absolutely i mean the 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 answer to that question is why is the director not supporting is there something that is that in th- is there something that you're doing which is not consistent with his line of thought see end of the day it is neither my film nor the sound designer's film it is the director's film if it is not consistent with his or li- her line of thought it is my job to understand what is it that they want like for example um, uh, let's say we were we were mixing urta punjab right now i did the the score and the background mix for urta punjab now one of the things we wanted to do for that was to make it a very organic there should not be a point where you can identify okay the string is from here this is the bass this is the this is the instrument this is the horns no in fact narain and benedict the people who did the background score did did a fantastic job on that so it was my job to take their interpretation make it cohesive like you are in that space do you interact with them while working on the oh yes yes i mean i make it a point to make sure i communicate with them when we were doing urta punjab one of the things we wanted to create that space of the music experience we didn't want to place anything or here or there or do two things like that so we actually had to find other ways like uh, methods of upmixing or you know harmonic upmixing which were never used in that space before so you went up having to creatively think outside and then maybe even invent techniques like we created something as called like we like to call the infinite delay which is basically you have a delay that keeps moving around 
your entire surround space as long as you want. That's because we wanted to have movement or you know frozen movements like that, or like a phrase, or maybe it's like a bar of a piece or like a quarter note that is just continuously moving and which is blended along with the rest of the score. These were techniques that we kind of ended up having to create for that thing. Um, now coming back to the interaction, you know, for a long time, I, I'm, I as a person always believed that uh, every person has a different sensibility. When I'm mixing a film, I'm required to have a sensibility for music, some, a sensibility for realism, because these two are completely different things. When you're mixing music, there is a certain balance you want to be able to achieve, you know, not overpowering. It has to sound good or at least fit the screen. When you're doing effects or when you're doing dialogues, it's a completely different sensibility. You don't use the same kind of reverbs. You have to be very careful about, is, okay, this is a room. So you have to have dirty reverb. You have to be ready to dirty up things. You can't, when I say dirty, I don't mean like make, creating a muddy mix, no. It has to be very real. And in real space, we don't hear everything that's really clean, to be honest. When we sit in a room, we have the AC, we have this, you and me are conversing. You know, the room has a reverb, you know, the space has a tone. But if we were to hear a piece of music, all of this would die out. You would have longer reverb tails and delays and all of that. So you have to be able to shift between two sensibilities. So one of the things I always end up doing is like, if I have an issue, if I'm not sure of the balance of the music, there is nothing to be ashamed of that. I don't take it personally, ki, oh, I don't know what the music is. No, there are people like, let's say, we, like I was, I was working on Agnipath. Now on Agnipath, I know it was getting to a point where like, you know, Vijay, Vijay Dayal was mixing the score and Ajay Atul were doing the score. It, it became to a point where like all of us were working back to back. And I went to Yashraj, I, I, went, I, went, I met Vijay, I said like, okay Vijay, don't bother about stemming this out or reducing the number of tracks, you know, that is not your creative part. Send it to me, as it is. Don't stress about that, I'll take care of it. If there are issues, you know, I have no problem in calling you to come to the studio. And that's what I did. For things that I thought maybe was not right as a balance, I called Vijay. The, the, I mean, let's, to be honest, he spent more time on the score than I have on the score. He knows what he's lived and breathed that. So it should not be wrong for a film mix engineer or any mix engineer to call somebody else who's lived that. There, there used to be this concept of you do, you do music, you have no idea about films. No. We are talking about a certain element of that film. It is my, of course, as a film mixer, it is my responsibility to see how it stays in that film. But if I can't get that element right, I call the people who do it. And it always works as a team, you know. You cannot be a single guy running a ship unless you are the director. You have to be friends with the people in the industry because then you at least know that you can comfortably call them and say like, dude, you know, maybe this thing is not right or maybe just I just want it to be separate. And they're willing to go that extra mile for you. Yes, and at the end of the day, if you watch the film or if I or my wife watches the film, they are not concerned if you had 300 tracks of music. No. They're just concerned about how it sounds like. Again, as an, as an engineer, it's my job to make sure that they feel it's not too, too many things that's running. So, you know, things like that. And it pays to have friends. I mean, let's face it. The Bollywood industry is the second biggest industry. I think it's the second biggest industry in the world when it comes to films. Okay. And there are only a handful of people and, and you know everyone like family. You have to maintain that kind of rapport because... I mean, like, no one's going to go out anywhere. So when you have this whole communication, what is happening is you allow a whole industry to grow. I may grow, the person, uh, you know, with me is growing. But when every person grows is when an industry reaches a different level. And you want to be able to take it there. So one of the things that I always do is I, I am a firm believer that my techniques are not supposed to be only mine. And the reason is, if I come up with a technique or if I come up with an idea, I implement it and I share it out to the world. So once I share it out, there may be somebody, even one person who is probably inspired from this. And you he shared how you approach the score mix? And yeah, I com I, what I do is I completely share about what I did, why did I do it, where did I go wrong? Because this is very important. It is, it is not about saying like, okay, these are my plugins and these are my presets. If I don't tell them about why I use this you plugin, share that also? yes, absolutely. 
I mean, I don't close the doors at all. I <laughs> leave the doors open. You know, but of course, if even like if there is a technique that I created, or maybe I came up with, I I because see the whole fundamental thing is like I am also inspired from someone, and how do you get inspired? Is because that someone thought of sharing it. If that someone didn't think of sharing it, I wouldn't know that fact to be inspired, right? Mm-hmm. And you know, and the good thing is when you have this good rapport. you have no ego issues or no issues in calling up somebody and saying like hey dude i don't know how this thing works can you help me with this and they will be happy to tell you so there are no barriers that you have to cross to get to somebody else and what is happening at the end of the day you get a product that sounds good in which all of these people have worked in so you slowly by slowly when something starts to sound good you have a whole industry moving forward and that is extremely inspirational so seeing sharing in a way also lifts standards of work for the absolutely industry. my whole question is why do you have to reinvent the wheel if i did something in this film if i okay let's say i did a i did a technique and i go and tell vijay dude i did something like this he'll probably or may not do something like that or the good thing is when you share something there's always something that they will offer you it's not like ah okay Now that you've told me this, I'll not tell this to anyone. No, that does not. That does not happen. Because you're talking to friends. You know, Vijay will come back and tell me, "Dude, I did something like this." Or you know, when I speak to Farad sometimes, or Shantanu da, you know, there are there's a lot of wisdom that they have which I don't have, which I have no idea about. You know, like okay, now what happens when my when this trailer? Let's say I do a trailer in surround, and it it sounds kick-ass in the theater. I have no clue what is going to happen on YouTube or Facebook. Mm. and in today's world that is where it gets to the publicity from and then i speak to them like dude i don't know you do two track mixes so how do you do it for youtube and they're more than happy to tell so what does that happen that is raising my standard as well so somebody else who is doing something that i do i can tell him that this is what i do so when you look at it that entire platform starts to do that or starts to elevate from that so again if i tell vijay like i did this technique he might do it he might come up with something else and many like maybe later on when we meet up of having a beer or something or, or that's what he'll come back and tell me like oh by the way i tried that and this is what i also did so there's something else that you get so it's never stopping you from doing anything and the whole misconception that if you share it it's out of your hands is is it's totally wrong if you share it and it's out of your hands remember you actually had the inspiration and the inclination to make that that is not stopping you from making something else so you will always make something else up as you go along the line so that's a very positive and a nice attitude to keep you know in an industry where there are many people who are not comfortable sharing it's mm. not that they don't want to maybe share but maybe they are not comfortable or maybe they they think it's not the right thing that they are doing right. so it could be their own reasons for not sharing right but the fact that you are doing it openly on a blog yeah i mean very commendable one thank you so much one of the things that i always do is i i know people who have these fantastic ideas they're probably not good at communicating it exactly so i call them up and i speak to them and i ask them like is this okay if i write about this i've never gotten no for an answer for I, example i'm going to meet up with even shajit koheri mm. uh, who's worked on on dangal dangal recently yeah. so and you did an interview with yeah him. yeah so you and even he in that interview have thanked everybody in the team exactly because this is not like you know i am playing the guitar or the lead guitar and i am the hero of the song <laughs> yeah 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 sound i guess is completely team work it is also. it is i mean see it goes everywhere like for example dangal was a film that i loved i loved everything like they booted the mix it was a fantastic mix shajit did the sound the score was really nice the songs were good everything from the folly to the detailing that was there was really nice and you know today i could call shajit and ask him like how did you do it and he will tell me and if i ask him can i write this he said yeah go ahead so people have left that whole thing of you know it's not like he does a dangal tomorrow it's like somebody else is not going to do the same dangal right okay. so it doesn't matter if those techniques are out it's like it also shows you to what extent you're willing to go for a film yeah and you know when you talk about the extent that you're willing to go for a film i must say that uh you know as engineers like me or you know anybody who's in who's been in my space 
some of the biggest sacrifices are not are, are not done by us they're done by our family like when i mix films i end up having to work like i because i work around 18 20 hours a day for like 3 weeks in succession without you know going home or anything like so my wife sometimes brings my dress to the studios and all of that but i also have to make sure that because i choose to work that way my assistants need not I and mean, they have a life so i kind of tell tend to keep them at 10 hours or 8 hours or whatever it is whatever makes them comfortable because you know they are my second line of defense and i always i don't look at them as people who are there to you know kind of um be my personal assistant no they are my extension mm. if i'm not there i have no issues in then you know taking over and doing something because that is when you know it grows you have more people come in you know one of the biggest things i've always felt is students when they enter this this industry you know they spend 3 years to 3 years 2 years 1 year learning sound and you're spending all of that or sometimes even 5 years or whatever it is very painful to tell them that you know it is outdated and you have to relearn it is extremely painful because they've invested much more effort than what we have probably with a lot more sincerity in getting here so i never believed in the fact that they have to reinvent the wheel i am always a firm believer that you know they have to have the opportunity of standing on the shoulders of giants that's where that's how i came in from i stood on the shoulders of other giants they have the op- i'm not saying i'm a giant but even though even if i am a midget they still have the opportunity to know what i know and stand on from where i come from it is always something you take forward and you don't let the buck stop there did this uh, she just trigger in you this kind of sharing feeling maybe because you yourself were uh, not helped or you found it difficult to find information when you were a student and were you know just starting off in the audio industry in fact i think it was the exact opposite okay. when we were taught in chetana the first thing we were taught was like information is not for yourself because if it were for yourself you will never get it it, so if it, it is for yourself it is also for somebody else so the seeds were sown they yeah active. and yeah. when i came here so i first assisted hidendra ghosh and anup dev and over a period of time you 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 see how two different people work and then you get to a point like sir wo kyun kiya apne and they are happy to tell you it is it is you have to frame that question correctly it is not like you know you don't have to be arrogant in asking that if you show a genuine interest out of curiosity is like you, it's it's also a, you know a subtle way it's a compliment it's like that sounds amazing like how did you do it nobody will say ah mm-hmm. no no is your their assistants as well so i started getting that and then when i saw other people who actually wanted to learn more or in their heads they had reached a certain point okay i am this and then they come back and then in you know within yourself like no dude you there's much more space for you to grow how subtly can you put it across you know so then all of that triggered a fact that okay there's no point in me keeping all of this to myself and the best part is when i share i also get to know where i went wrong because i'm not sharing this to one person it is reaching a wider audience we're getting wrong in what way i may have done something that's totally wrong although it may i may have achieved the result in some way or the other but the film is already it's, out the film is out i'm talking about techniques okay so if, if i share like yeah i had to do this this and this and like one of the things was like um, when we uh, did bombay velvet um, the so the the avids pro uh, the pro compressor was out at that point of time and uh, so i am a big fan of most of those pro pro series of the pro compressor pro limiter all of those so the pro compressor what i did was i engaged the compressor and i just switched on the side chain whereas you just hear what is being compressed and you use that as a trigger for something else and then i was speaking about this and then people were like oh yeah that's a, that's a good idea so like maybe you could have used a gate for me a gate didn't work anyways so somebody who came up with this idea was like that's really nice maybe you should try something as a bit more harmonic after that so you have a much more smoother ride i never thought of it so you know things like that where you actually understand things in a in a one step further because they start thinking from where you left off you know when you you spend a lot of energy getting from 8 to like 1 to 
as in they're already at 10 at that point it's much less energy to get to 15 but then 0 to 15 is a huge number so that's what i learned and they come back to me and you get inspired and all of that and that is where your daily inspiration comes from it's like what can you do here that you've not done before see to be honest uh, it's not about just lowering I keep, I keep telling this, it's not about lowering background against the dialogue. You can do that with the side chain compressor, compressor and the right <laughs> attack and release. You don't really need a human hand. The thing is, how much and what is the story that you want to say? Is it emotionally right? And so if you lower the background, you need more in the surrounds or more in the front. Are you going to change the positioning of things? All of that comes into play. And one of the reasons also that I started writing about this is like, if I did a scene, one day later, it sounds, let's say it sounds kick-ass. I have no clue how I did it. Because when you're mixing, you are in a state of trance. You can no longer concentrate on anything you cannot do. You cannot have a conversation. You cannot think about anything else. You cannot think about, is the lunch come? Is it tea time? Is that guy going to come? Do I have to give? No. You are in a complete state of trance. And that is a huge difference between mixing with one finger and mixing with both hands. When you're mixing with both hands, you're actually manipulating a lot of things. Like you have music, dialogue, ambience, reverbs, and all of that. You're actually looking at everything in one go. When you focus so much in something and you invest a lot of your mental energy, you are transported. It is a trance. When you come out of it, you, you know exactly what you need to fix and you go back and you, st you start without stopping, you come back, you start fixing those things. And I know there have been instances where I tell, okay, this dialogue just shifted up by two frames and this, this one just make sure you bring it down reduce the highs on that because i'm still doing these things and when you come out of it you watch the scene then like i have no clue what happened i can't remember that half an hour or 45 minutes of my life and it's an exhilarating experience but then i realize that if i manage to get something if i don't write it down how i can't remember for once and if i've written it down there's no harm in giving it to someone else so that's my whole philosophy in anything artistic art, art for me i'm happy being a performer because i know there are people who are judging what i do in spite of them not knowing it is me who, who does it but i like that and when i see people getting happy in two hours or two and a half hours of watching a film for which you've labored for 450 hours without going home, you know, not having food at the right time, acidity, ulcer, headaches, sleeplessness, you know, drinking, um, what do you call it, Red Bull, fainting, you know, and all of that things you've gone just for two hours of somebody saying, hmm, good. That <laughs> is what gives me the happiness. Wow. That's, that's really something. <laughs> so, uh, Shijesh, thank you for sharing your uh, initial childhood days and the philosophy of sharing and oh, no, the, the policy that you've kept on in your journey. In the next part, we'll speak about many other things. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much, Aditya. It's been a lovely pleasure.